Oh, Lord. Now, we used to dealing with this old stupid fool, Donald Trump, but um, more stupidity from this man. He stood in front of a room full of black conservatives. Well, you look at the pictures, most of the folks in the room were white. Uh, but and compared his legal issues to the injustices that African-Americans face in the legal system. Yeah, he actually said that. Uh, go ahead and press play. These lights are so bright in my eyes that I can't see too many people out there. But uh, I can only see the black ones. I can't see any white ones, you see. That's how far I've come. That's how far I've come. That's a long, that's a long way, isn't it? These lights. <laughs> Ah, uh, we've come a long way together. And then I got indicted a second time, and a third time, and a fourth time. And a lot of people said that that's why the black people like me, because they have been hurt so badly and discriminated against. And they actually viewed me as I'm being discriminated against. It's, it's been pretty amazing. But would you rather have the black president or the white president who got $1.7 off the price? I think they want the white guy. Right now. Okay. Well, Florida Congressman Byron Donalds actually went on national television and defended those racist comments. Sounds like Donald Trump was implying that he can win black voters because they get indicted all the time, too. Is that what he was saying? Well, I think it's in part of that. It's part of it, Kristen. Look, the, the, it was a great night, Friday night in Columbia, South Carolina. The president was really just enjoying himself. It was a great celebration for black conservatives across our country. But let's be very clear. Our economy is a mess. Our border is completely unsecured. These things are co causes of major concerns for black voters like it is for every voter in our country. But then when you layer on the fact that, yes, this is political persecution from the Department of Justice and from radical DAs throughout our country, this is something similar that black people had to deal with the, with the justice system themselves. And so their, their look of it is real simple. Well, dang, if the government's going after him with foolishness, uh, he can't be that bad, especially considering the fact that Joe Biden is terrible at his job. Well, con Congressman, let's just be clear. All four indictments against former President Trump were brought by grand juries. There is no evidence that the indictments are political in nature. But let me stick to the question here. Let me get you to respond to Biden campaign co-chair and former Congressman Cedric Richmond, who said this about his comments. Donald Trump claiming that black Americans will support him because of his criminal charges is insulting. It's moronic and it's just plain racist. How do you respond to that charge that it's just plain racist? What I would say is that Cedric is trying to play politics and use racial politics even now as we get into the general election. That's one. Number two, like I said at the top, the number one reason why minority voters in our country want to support Donald Trump is because he did the job of president. He did a great job as president. Our country was secure. The economy was great. These are all things that Donald Trump talked about Friday night. He also did talk about the indictments. What Americans don't want to see, especially black Americans and anybody else, they don't want to see a political justice department. They don't want to see a two-tier system of justice. They want justice to be followed. They want lady justice to be blind. That's what the American people well, want. That's what black voters want. That's what everybody wants. Okay. So let me sort of unpack this right here. Um, Donald Trump don't give a damn about black people. Donald Trump don't love black people. Donald Trump don't like black people. If I got to remind y'all that Donald Trump's uh, great grandfather was a pimp. His daddy attended a KKK rally. Got arrested there. Don't forget that Donald Trump himself started his housing career with his daddy, discriminating against black people. They would write a C at the top of the application. So let's just be 
real, okay? He called African nations shithole countries. Does not care about us at all. And he thinks a few rappers saying good things about him means that he cares. Also recall 2016, he thanked black people for not voting. So what you have to understand what is at play here is that this is voter suppression. What Donald Trump wants to do is to make sure that black folks don't turn out. They're touting these numbers. They're touting, uh, they're touting how well he's done. They're touting uh, who he could get 18, 20%. One of them black conservative fools stood up there at their rally and actually said um, that, oh, Donald Trump is going to get 50% of all black males. And you got these people posting videos and they're saying, oh, how things were wonderful. You hear all that also from Byron Donald. And they're talking about, oh, man, how we were all getting paid. But if you're out there suggesting that black folks were getting paid well under Donald Trump, let me remind you that those checks were passed by a Democratic House. Yep, that's how that happened. You cannot remotely compare the increase in black owned businesses under Trump to Biden. Can't do it. The economy today is better than it was under Trump. Now, also remember, Donald Trump was handed a great economy by President Barack Obama. He handed President Biden an awful economy. If you're black out there, don't forget all the black people who died because of COVID. Because this fool was talking about injecting bleach into our systems. Let's not forget any of that stuff. So we, we need to understand what is really at play here. And I say to you, we're going to dedicate an entire two, entire show to Project 2025. And we need to understand what's at play there. The wholesale targeting of African Americans. Now, you got people out here who just throw up silly stuff. Some, some fool on name Heard said the, the whole economy is trash. That's a lie. It's a lie. Today, the Biden Harris administration announced they're opposing the merger of Albertson, Albertsons and Kroger because they believe that is going to contribute to more price increases of food. They've been fighting these type of mergers. There's no doubt the economy today is better than it was when Trump was president. But I got to remind people we still are three years and still trying to recover from COVID. A 100 year pandemic. So it's not like all of a sudden things are going to be great. Immediately, you literally have to rebuild this economy. And we've seen that. Oh, I got somebody sitting here going, oh, who is this idiot? Oh, uh, the economy is terrible. Inflation is real. Stop gaslighting. We know inflation is real because you still got corporations jacking up prices. You've got corporations that are shrinking packages and goods, but increasing the price. No president controls that. And so what we need to understand is if we're evaluating Trump and the Republican Party, you have to be asking yourself, what actually is their agenda for black people? And what are they going to roll out? That trash platinum plan, which we know is a fraud. 
But the thing here, Renita, is that there are people being played who don't realize they're being played. And what they better understand is if that fool and his minions get back in. And let me remind everybody, all y'all people who are talking about Trump 2024, Stephen Miller, Trump's top aide, blocked the money to the black farmers. Y'all need to understand what these people have done to stop black advancement. Sarah Tim Scott out there lying about Trump and HBCU funding. I sent him a text on Friday. He still hasn't responded because he know he's lying. And so folk bet not get played because a year from now, they're going to look at me and go, why didn't someone tell us? Renita, we did. Well, when you say that Donald Trump doesn't like black people, I would take it a step further. He, in my opinion, literally does not care if black people cease to exist in this country. And his comments about him being indicted is going to make him better relate to black folks. You know, he got one thing right when he said that black people are being over indicted in our current criminal legal system. But he's not going to do anything to affect that, whether he wins or loses an election. And so his comments between this and the sneaker release last week just really continue to make the point that he does not understand black voters. I say that because, number one, black people take voting very, very seriously. And we do not make decisions about voting based off of sneakers and mug shots. That is not how the black community works. In fact, the largest fight that we are having within the black community has been people deciding whether or not they're going to vote. All of that is based off of people taking voting very seriously and understanding the power of voting. Donald Trump saying that black folks will want to see him, you know, get out of this and and not be held accountable and, and that will make them more relatable to black voters is absolutely garbage. What black people want to see is that finally in this system that almost never holds white rich men like himself accountable, that some that they that he actually will be held accountable. That is what black people want to see. And then last but not least for Byron Donalds, you know, I bet that he had to practice his little speech that he gave uh, to the newscast, the news reporter several times in the mirror, because for him to say with a straight face that the economy was better under Trump is absolute garbage. Here in Georgia, our unemployment fund, our system crashed several times, was nearly broken. Um, we had issues with, you know, being able to pay folks because of the amount of unemployment that was requested all at once under COVID. And Trump did nothing to sh try to shore up states at helping them with paying for unemployment. He did nothing to try to support Americans uh, at a time when we had a unprecedented pandemic. And so, you know, I'm not a person who believes that the president, I, I think that the public thinks that presidents have far more control over the economy than they actually do. But in no universe, when you compare the Trump economy and the Biden economy, even with inflation prices, can you say with a straight face that the Trump economy was better? So I think that, you know, what Byron is saying will fool some people who won't do their research, but they should know that he is just bold faced lying. And I think he probably had to practice those bold faced lies a lot in order to get that out with a straight face. And Julian, the thing that people need to understand is that when you're talking about the economy and when you're talking about um, what needs to be done, like you got, it is like Sean Dupree, right? He goes, Roland hates the fact that black men are abandoning the Democratic Party. Well, Sean Dupree, Republicans are abandoning the Affordable Care Act. Black health care, in terms of those uninsured, is at its lowest ever due to, to the Affordable Care Act. Guess who wants to get rid of that? Trump and the Republicans. We would be stupid, Julian, to vote for that fool and these MAGA cult folks and put them back in office. Well, Renita said there's something that's very essential. Do your research. The fact is that what uh, the orange man has done is that he's worked on the most racist tropes there are. Black people like me because I've been indicted. Give me a you know what break. <clears throat> that's absurd. It's ridiculous. It's insulting. Um, these golden sneakers or whatever he has, uh, black people like uh, according to him, these sneakers, again, absurd, insulting. But people have to do their research. Uh, there have been a, a spate of stories in the past 
month or so, really starting in late November, talking about black men abandoning the Democratic Party. I haven't seen any hard surveys, but I, you keep hearing these stories. Brothers are uh, abandoning. And I will tell you, my male sibling, who I fight with all the time, um, he voted for Trump in 16. He did not vote for him in 20. And I said to him, he has four sisters. I'm like, fool, why would you vote for that man? Here's what his, here's what his answers were. Number one, he likes uh, the fact that the man is, orange man is the entrepreneur. Number two, he likes his machismo, which I think is just disgusting. And number three, he has the issues with immigration. And he feels that Trump will have a harder line on immigration. He's in construction and he can tell you stories about how, you know, how uh, immigrants come in and they low bid, um, you know, a construction job. First of all, well, I first, think of all, all this stuff is first of all, what, what, your brother, your brother also got to say Trump used illegal immigrant labor at Mar-a-Lago in Bedminster. Exactly. We have, no, we have had, the, you know, uh, it's 20. He don't, he don't hate, he don't hate illegal immigrants when he can use them. <laughs> and damn it, he married one. No. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But the, but the fact is that these, the spate of stories keeps coming out. And what I'm learning and or noticing like you, like with my brother and some of his friends, is they see the stories and they feel, well, see, other brothers are leaving too. So the if the issue is, as again, I just go back to what Renita said and talking to some people today, um, do your research. Get for real. This economy is better than it ever was under the orange man. It really, it, we, we have a very solid economy. Inflation is our biggest challenge, but it's coming down. The unemployment rate has been um, below 4% for almost a year. The two to one black to white unemployment ratio, that has broken. So right now the black unemployment rate is like three point, no, the white unemployment rate is, uh, overall employment is 5.7, no, 3.7, ours is 5.7. So that's the two to one has broken. So that was almost, you could count on it. So we have a better economy than we've ever had. And then as everyone has said, the HBCUs have benefited, so many have benefited student. And I think, as somebody said earlier, people have a mistaken impression of what a president can do. President Biden tried to do student debt forgiveness, and the courts would not allow him to do it in an overarching way. So now he's done it in a piecemeal way. The Biden-Harris administration is committed, frankly, to black success. Now, are they perfect? Oh, hell no. Could they do more? Yes, but they also have to deal with political realities. So I find it totally frustrating, number one, that that like that person that uh, Christian Walker was talking to on uh, Meet the Press, I mean, it's not, not only did he drink the Kool-Aid, but he spiked it. Um, but you know, we basically are looking at people who will do anything. Tim Scott needs, somebody needs to have a paper bag party with him. Just take him outside and just... I don't understand how he continues to tell the lies that he tells. But we know he's basically baldly so ambitious that he would get engaged, uh, baselessly. Um, let, me, let me stop. Simply, folks, do your research. If you do your research, you will understand that uh, the Biden-Harris administration have, have done a good job. Could they do a better job? Yes. Could they, given certain political realities? We're about to shut down again, Roland. That little Mike Johnson from Louisiana refuses to put legislation in front of people. We're about to go back into a government shutdown unless somebody pulls a rabbit out of the hat. That's not Biden-Harris. That's Republicans. Before I go to you, Uncle Congo, uh, Bob Costas uh, was on CNN over the weekend, and boy, did he nail it. From you come at this from a position of not wanting to see Trump get elected. You should state that at the outset. True? Yes, absolutely. He is by far the most disgraceful figure in modern presidential history. He's only become more disgraceful since 2016 and since 2020. He is a bubbling cauldron of loathsome traits, and it's only those who are actually suffering from Trump derangement syndrome, which is the way they and Fox News and all the rest of MAGA media try to brush aside all the legitimate criticisms of Trump. You have to be in the throes of some sort of toxic delusion 
in a toxic cult to believe that Donald Trump has ever been in any sense emotionally, psychologically, intellectually, or ethically fit to be president of the United States. But his supporters are locked in on that. There is no cult okay. of Joe Biden. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm a Congo. He summed, he summed it up. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, hashtag ether, right? Uh, I, I love it. I mean, look, when it comes down to it, we've been talking a lot about the Trump versus Biden economy. It's also, I just want to add one thing to that, that Biden's economy was better under Trump's before COVID. A lot of Republicans like to add, well, COVID happened. No, before, his, before COVID happened, Biden still has a better economy than Trump comparatively, even given what he inherited from Trump versus what Trump inherited from Obama. Um, when it comes to that, that speech in South Carolina, one of the things we have to be mindful of is that those comments that he's making about the indictments and all of these other things, there's just two things I want to say. If we are so anti-courts and all of this other type of stuff, why are there four black people who are involved in trying to put Trump away? Fonnie Will Willis, Alvin Bragg, uh, Letitia James, and obviously J Judge Chutkin is the judge, obviously, so she's not you know, going at him, but she's in charge of that trial as well. And a lot of us seem to be really big fans of, of them right now. And lastly, when he makes those comments, he's not talking to black people. He is talking to his MAGA base and he's giving them further permission structure to act on all of their base stereotypes about black people. It's the same thing he did with Mexicans being rapists, the same thing he's giving about ban all Muslims. Every time he says these things, hate crimes and other types of action spike against that group. So if this man saying it and in front of some black people like that, it gives them a deeper permission structure to be able to go on Fox News or go into their job the next day and say the most despicable things as well. And so we have to be mindful of even though Trump was around black people in that space, his audience is not us. And that's another big part of the problem that we have to be mindful of as he continues to grab these microphones and spit this ignorance. And I'm so glad that he's been challenged at many different levels in terms of media responses. And lastly, when people are talking about this thing with the black male vote, I'm sick of people bringing up these celebrities and other names, as opposed to people like you, Roland Martin, and other people who can speak knowledgeably to the black male experience with voting. They got to stop infantilizing us as if every election is the first time black men are deciding to vote. We know what we're doing, and that's why the numbers for Trump and Republicans in general have been so low, and I'm expecting the same thing this time around.